Well, I think the first thing I'll say, we're a great position to have such quality players in the back row. The, uh, somebody like Lewis come in, I thought he did really well off the bench last week. I thought he was one of the best forms we had in, in the Six Nations. So, to have the ability to, to start him and then to bring Billy Vinopol off the bench later in the game, I think that's a, a real strong position for us. Is it a horses for courses selection in terms of the pace Japan could play at? Well, I think whenever you select and you're looking at what you want to do in the game, your game plan, you also got to um, see a look at the opposition. And we play against a very strong Japanese side who have a um, play in a very different manner to other teams, a very skilled team and a very fast team. What we try to do is ensure we have the right team to get the result we want. How close is Billy Vinopola to full match fitness, do you think? Billy Vinopola is fully match fit. So it's just a decision that you want him as the impact, yeah? As with every selection I make, I make what I think is the right selection for us to get the result we want. And you'll see that across the team with the couple of changes I made uh, that I think this is the right team. I said last week that I expected the players to perform and, and they did. These are big players and they perform on the big occasions like the man next to me. And I expect that they will go out in another big game on Sunday night here in Nice and put in another big performance. And both props changed? What's your thinking there? Again, we brought in Joe Marler to start and Kyle Sinclair to start at tides. So, what a great position we're in. I thought Ellis was excellent last week and I thought Joe came off the bench and was fantastic. And now, one's got a different, there's a different role in terms of starting and finishing. But, what a position to be in to have players like that. Kyle, back fully fit. I said he was, he was just about fit last week, but he's had a great week's training, um, over 60 caps, um, World Cup experience. Again, another player who performs on the big occasion. And I expect these players, because they're, they're eager to go again Sunday night, I expect them to, uh, to go and perform again on another big occasion. Four red cards, four yellow cards in six games. How much has that been talked about? How imperative is it that this, the discipline improves? Well... I think you do talk about a couple of different things here. Because if we're talking about cards, that's one matter. We need to ensure we have 15 players on the pitch. If you're talking about discipline, we gave away seven penalties last week. So this is a disciplined team. What we have had is incidents that have meant cards have been issued against our team, against the England team. And we want 15 players on the pitch. That is very important. Do you want consistency as well across the officiating at this point? Are you suggesting there isn't? It's been said. It has been said. I've noted that there is a large amount of commentary from different sources about what appears to be a lack of consistency and, and a lack of transparency from the decision-making process. Um, now, it's obviously not my role to comment upon that. That's world rugby. And... Now, I also note that there was a tremendous amount of comment from World Rugby about Owen Farrell over a couple of weeks during our preparation for this tournament, a situation that went on and on. There was lots of comments from World Rugby. I know there hasn't been very many comments from World Rugby on, as I'm told, in the last week or so. Um, but as I say, I'll leave that to World Rugby. Would you like them to speak about that? Um, it's not my matter to, to say anything to World Rugby. That's their matter. Courtney, the fans played a huge role in Marseille, didn't they? Have you got a message for the travelling contingent here? Um, yeah, the big message is just we appreciate your support. Um, we obviously want to play well um, for each other and for you guys. So, um, yeah, continue to come along and we'll try and put on a good, uh, good show. How big a boost can that be? How big a boost was it in Marseille? And, and how much does it drive you when you've got noise that maybe you didn't experience or haven't experienced as much at Brooklyn? Um, no, it's great. Um, it's amazing, especially uh, World Cup. You need um, a good travelling contingent um, to um, to come and support your games and you know um, get behind you when you need it most. And um, we certainly had that at the weekend. So yeah, um, all props to the fans. Um, I said after the game, how much you meant to us. So yeah, thank you again. Paul, you can just give us a player's view on what it's like navigating the, the head contact and the dangerous tackle situation because, as we know, it's a, it seems to be very inconsistent and rather than dealt with. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, don't hit the head is, is all you can really do. Um, so, you know, it's not our place to judge one um, incident to another kind of thing. Uh, all you can do is trying to safeguard yourself and, and trying to make sure you, you tackle high. Obviously, um, there, there's things that happen on a pitch that sometimes you can't control, but generally, um, yeah, you've got to make sure your, your tackle height's um, in the right place. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, like I said, you go out there. Nobody's nobody's trying to hurt each other. Just trying to go there, play your best, um, compete hard, and um, you know you you try and do it in the fairest way you can. Steve, has it been quite nice this week after that of a win, being able to focus more on growth and how you take the team forward and what you look forward to seeing this weekend? We focus on moving forward every day, and that's been since we came into camp uh, a few months ago. That hasn't changed throughout any aspect. I think the players have been magnificent every single day. Uh, we're always building towards the tournament and we continue to build through this week. Was there an aspect from last weekend that you were most pleased about overall? I, I think there was lots I was pleased about in terms of that performance. Um, I think what I will acknowledge, and I think it's really important to acknowledge here, is, is the supporters. I know it's just been discussed. I thought they were outstanding and when you when you go down to 14 men after two minutes it was certainly in the stand there it was it was as if the the supporters recognized the gap they recognized that void and the supporters stepped into it and made and became our 15th player i thought they were absolutely incredible i've been privileged to be involved in this team uh, for since 2000 in one way or another for most of that period with a couple of a couple of times away a couple of blocks away and that was as good as i ever heard the english support and a lot of the focus in this tournament will be around the players but you as a coach at your first club club how are you are you finding the role and are you enjoying yourself um well i was at the world cup in 2007 as a player 15 and 19 as a coach so to be here at fourth world cup is fantastic i think it's as i said um, this man next to me is his fourth as a player, so I'm trying to keep up with him. Um, so <laughs> he's doing pretty well, isn't he? He's doing pretty well. Um, Courtney, I'll just stop on that in your fourth World Cup. Yeah. Can you just talk us through how you get yourself ready for games now, how that's changed over the year, and where you find the drive from to produce performances like last weekend? Um, how have I changed? I guess. Generally, I just try and enjoy um, getting out there on the pitch, um, especially as you come towards kind of the latter end of your career. Um, luckily, still being able to play international rugby is, um, you know, a bit of a blessing. So, um, take every game as it comes. Do my best to enjoy it. Try, um, you know, keep a cool head, especially if I'm named skipper. So, um, yeah, that's the main thing. And then, yeah, just, just get out there um, and, and have as much fun as I can. You know, try and inspire, inspire the boys, uh, lead by example. Um, but, yeah, I suppose not, not too much has changed, but, uh, but I just try and enjoy as much as I can. I'll, um, I'll second that in terms of not too much has changed. The, one of the first sessions he came when I was I was player and you'd see that trademark Courtney Law's tackle, that low tackle that, that hits and stops people dead. And I still am seeing that on the training field every week. Uh, so on the field last week, and I'm sure we're going to see more of it on Sunday night. And, and there's one more, Courtney. Um, on the development of Lewis, you, you've seen him come from probably just a little cup coming to the club and now sort of fully fledged international. Do you, do you take pride in that? And what, what's the big thing that you've seen change in him? Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's obviously a great player. Um, very much looking forward to playing with him at the weekend. Uh, it's been a while since we started together, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much going to enjoy being out there with him. Um, but no, it's, it's as you said, it's great to see him come through uh, from academy to, you know, start in England, uh, play a World Cup, second World Cup. So um, he's he's developed. He's ta he takes on board everything the coaches tell tell him, um, and that's testament to him. And then, you know, he gets out there and he just works his, you know, works himself to the bone. And that's the kind of player you need. Um, that's the kind of players we need, um, and and we know that that he'll deliver that time and time again. He, um, Lewis, the other week said he kind of sees you as his big brother, you know, Northampton. I mean, he's a, he's a leader in his own right now, isn't he? So I mean, 
Yeah. How, how, how good is it to, to play alongside of you? Obviously, can complement each other very well. No, yeah, I suppose it's an interesting dynamic because uh, when we go back, he's my skipper. So, um, but no, no, like I just try and support him. Um, obviously, for the club as much as I can, and then when when the roles are reverse, um, you know, the the situation is is obviously reversed as well. So he, you know, he picks up the slack. He does does all my hard work, my hard work for me, especially in the week. But. Um, but no, um, he's uh, as I said, he's a class player. Very much looking forward to getting out there and seeing what he does again this weekend. Obviously, after last weekend, making twelve tackles or whatever it is in in like ten minutes, you know, you, you know the kind of bloke he is. And Steve, with the quality that is there in that back row, the back five, the fact, the fact that he's you know sort of forced his way right to the front of the argument is just testament to his commitment and ability. Yeah, I think uh, Lutz is a tremendous player. His ability to play six, seven, and eight is incredibly valuable. I think he's um, a, a fantastic player. You can often talk about Lutz and talk about the, the brilliant team man that he is and the leader he is. I think people sometimes don't acknowledge just what a good player is, what a talented player is. He carries in the middle, he carries on the edge, made 12 tackles, at Corny said 12 tackles in 10 minutes last week. Um, he jackals, he's, um, he's a tremendous player. And uh, this facility you're at for the few days, I mean, it's obviously a fantastic setup. Uh, clearly, the, you know, the man who set it up is down Rick, the man with success in uh, coaching in tennis. Any, any interest in tennis and, uh, you know, can, it sort of, can some of that sort of winning mentality rub off? Well, I, I'm not sure this qualifies as tennis, but I, I'm told quite a few of the players are, are trying to become very competitive at paddle. So is that, I think they're enjoying that. Mm. Are you, are you doing that? No, I'm too old for that. <laughs> uh, no, I, I can play tennis, but I don't play much paddle. I'm trying to just stay on the training paddle, to be honest. So I can't be risking, uh, risking anything. <laughs> yeah, there's a question over here. Yeah. Steve and Kotari, uh, I'm from Nippon TV. Uh, who are the key players in Japan? What's that? Konbanwa. The, <laughs> the, um, Michael Leach, I think Michael Leach is a tremendous player. I was privileged to work with him in build up to the 2015 World Cup. I think he's a really intelligent player and I think he's at the very heart of everything that's good about Japanese rugby. I think he's a, he's a man I have tremendous respect for, I think he's a, an excellent player. Um, that doesn't change the fact we want to make sure we, we outperform him on, on Sunday night. But a tremendous player. Kotori, uh, what do you think about uh, Kazuki Himeno, uh, Japan's captain, will be back? What do you think? Yeah, it's obviously a huge, huge boost for them. Um, so, you know, he's a great ball carrier, and he's going to let's get get you guys over the game line. So, um, you know, we, we've, as always, um, you've got you've got a few targets, especially in the forward pack that you know you need to uh, get on top of. So, uh, you know, we've got a huge respect for the Japanese team. Um, we know they're going to come, and they're going to do everything they can to win the game, so we'll be fully prepared, um, you know, and we've, we've had a good look of all, uh, you know, the entire team and we'll have a good uh, good idea of um, what, what we're going to and who we're going to target. Okay. Thank you. Um, last week your team was very impressive, uh, aggressive in defence. Is it the game you waited for since you are head coach of English? The, the turning point, the, the beginning of a, a new story. I said it's a game. It was the start of the World Cup. It was last week, and we are we are clearly pleased with the result and many aspects of the performance. It's been what we've been building towards, and now the team's been building again this week. Our focus is not on last week, and I understand the question. Our focus is not on last week. Our focus is on Sunday night here in Nice. It's great. We just arrived here, and I think I, I sense again from the players. They can't wait to get out there in, uh, on the big occasion again. Now, I said a week ago that, that there's, uh, last Saturday I talked about that the players were keen to join the party. The party started on Friday night in Paris last week. And um, we've got a couple more players who want to join the party this, this week. And I think this team wants to be in the thick of it. And we're looking forward to this game on Sunday night. During this press conference, you smiled a lot. It was not the case last week. Does it mean you, your life and your job has a little bit changed 
since the victory against Argentina? Um, I think I smile a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> this is my role. Uh, every day we try and get better, and our focus is playing against Japan on Sunday night, and we we can't wait for that game. Komawa. Komawa. I'm Japanese media. Um, I have a question to head coach. Um, I watched the first game of, of Japan. So could you tell me the impression that Japan against Chile? Yeah. Um, I thought that Japan played in a manner of the way that, that Japan has played over the last uh, eight years, really. The, the Japan way. They play the ball, the ball speed is fast, they move the ball, they have tremendously skilled players. Uh, I think added to that, they have um, uh, a real threat you saw around the set piece, the number of the scoring off the back of the line out, breaks off the back of the line out. I think you saw a very good team and I think you look at this uh, a coaching team that's been with them uh, for eight years now really, uh, over two World Cup cycles and you can see that identity in the team. Um, last autumn, your team made big win against Japan and how much confidence do you have right now? Oh, I think this is, um, as everything with this World Cup, what's gone before is not the most important thing. The most important thing is what's about to come and we look to this game on Sunday night. I think we've got a really good team. I think it's a 23 players who, in the, who wear that England shirt and I think will be roared on by a lot of England supporters who this week aim to be this, the 16th man um, supporting this team and ensuring that we perform, as I say, we've got big players who perform on the biggest of occasions and this is another big occasion. Thank you so much. Hi. Okay. Um, so you obviously have a link with Japan a lot. And, um, so how, what kind of match do you expect on Sunday? And also, obviously, your strongest point in the game is kicking. So um, high ball as well. So is that what you're going to be implementing that? Yep. So. Yeah, I have a very strong link going back a few years with, with Japan. I was very privileged to, to live in Tokyo for a couple of years there. And it's a very, Japan's a very special place and the Japan team's a very special team. Now, for us, uh, going into this game, we know we are going to have to defend exceptionally well. With the ball movement of the Japan team is exceptional. And they test you in a way that most other teams don't test you. So we've prepared thoroughly for that this week. I feel that the team is really well prepared. I think the team is um, energised and excited for going out there again on Sunday night. Hi, Steve. Uh, another question about Japan. Uh, just asked what your uh, overall memory was and uh, did you learn anything from your experience over there? Oof. Um, I learned a huge amount from my experience over there. I think override memories, the incredible hospitality, generosity, friendliness of the Japanese people um, who welcomed me and my family into Japan. The players worked um, so very, very hard and are so passionate about Japanese rugby. And um, I think an incredible place. One of the first camps, when I moved to Japan, one of the first camps we went on, we went up into the mountains outside Tokyo and in the summer. And um, every flat piece of ground, there was a rugby pitch and rugby teams were going training there through the summer, which was a bit cooler up in the mountains. And the, staying in one of the ski, ski chalets, ski resorts there, but actually in the middle of the summer. And the players at altitude there worked. Like I've never seen players work. And it was an incredible welcome for me into Japanese rugby and into, into the Japanese way of doing things. Well, I'm Japanese media. 
have a question on head coach, by the coach. Um, I read the email, and there seems to be a secret plan using a drop code. How do you set it up? <laughs> um, come by moi. Uh, the uh, as in any game situation, the, the players on the field there have got to work through a situation to get the result they want. And last week, the players worked through a situation brilliantly. And you know, I think that's immense credit to what they did. Now, what we're going to do is find another way to get the result we want against a completely different opponent on Sunday night. And that was something that went well for us last week. It's not necessarily something that's going to be this week. There's other things this week, and we've worked on other aspects this week, as I'm sure the Japan team have, has as well. Thank you so much. Okay. Any more for any more? Just one, one quick one. Um, the one thing that was lacking in a bit of performance was the try that you got in you. How confident are you about the try scoring capacity of, of this team? this group of players to really get the fans even more excited by, by what they're seeing from England team? Yeah. I think that um, the, as I look at all the underlying factors around our game and do I see progress and do I have the evidence of progress? Absolutely. And did we uh, get across the trial last week? No, we didn't. Do I, do I feel the team played last week in the manner that was required? Yes. Yes. And I feel that our overall game is developing. And as I'm sure you're, you're well aware, if you look, if we go two back to back, the most successful World Cups England have had, 03 and 07 back to back, win it, and then the final next year, eight tier one games, eight tier one tests, and how many tries in the eight? Well, you'll be able to tell me. I will. Four. So this, you get to this level, games are tight. Players have got to find a way to get an advantage, one way or another. And these players did an incredible job last week in finding an advantage. As I said, these guys are big players who rise to the biggest of occasions. And I anticipate and expect that these players will find another way on Sunday and will rise again to the big, big occasion. And just one to, to Courtney. Um, Confidence, I would imagine, has been sky high this week. The performance, the, the intensity, everything you promised as a group, you, you delivered. Has it been a, a change in self self belief, attitude, just the mindset? Because I'd imagine they're, that they're going to bounce in anyone's step as they got back to Matuke on on Sunday. Um, yeah, of course. Um, we wanted to get off to a good start, and we managed to do that. So um, we kind of we spoke about it on. Um, Monday before we were going to train on Tuesday and just talked about the choices we could make and the fact that, you know, yeah, we had a good game, but we've not cracked any kind of codes. Um, and we've got to get back, get back to work tomorrow um, and make sure that we take another step forward um, on Sunday night against Japan. And, and that is that is our intention, um, our only intention. Um, so, yeah, we are... We see this game as a huge opportunity to, to go and um, to improve again as a team. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.